How big a deal will it be in terms of uh, meeting the region's supply? So it, it's going to produce about a million hectolitres of beer when it's at its full capacity. So a hectolitre is two barrels, and you get around 300 mugs out of each barrel. Um, so a million hectolitres is, is a lot of volume. Um, the beauty of that site is it's a 55-acre site, and the production facility that produces that million hectolitres only takes up <coughs> a proportion of the site. So there's plenty of room for expansion. Um, I'd love to get that facility full and produce more. But right now, we've got the potential to take you know, a 3 million hectolitre business from the Nairobi plant and make it 4 million hectolitres. So lots and lots of potential for growth. And more importantly, lots and lots of potential to ask more farmers to grow more sorghum. Um, last year, we redistributed around a billion shillings worth of wealth back to farmers through sorghum production. Over the next couple of years, that will rise fourfold to four billion shillings. And that's really what gets us out of bed in the morning. Redistributing value and wealth back into communities through this special relationship is very, very powerful for Kenya. Interesting. And uh, let's shift gears a bit and look at uh, the pricing of products. Of course, there's uh, been a, a tax issue that did come up uh, when you look at uh, the budget statement. Mm. And uh, this, to an extent, has seen a number of uh, distributors and manufacturers, of course, um, hiking up the prices. Um, how will this impact on consumption, from your view? Well, I mean, firstly, uh, you know, excise is you know, um, important to Treasury. We're the second largest contributor of, um, of uh, taxes to the government. Um, around $500 million um, goes into government from us. We're 1% of GDP, we're 5% of any individual annual plan. And so we recognize that comes with responsibility. The, the sweet spot is to have enough of an adult conversation with government, um, and we're able to do that, so that we take sensible tax increases um, with sensible time gaps. And so, um, so whilst the, uh, an excise increase is always difficult to manage, it's a function of doing um, business in this marketplace and the role that EABL plays. 5.2% uh, um, isn't a disaster. It's, it's in line with inflation. We would prefer it to be every other year rather than every year because our research suggests that that's what Kenyans can cope with. Uh, and we'll be very careful in how we pass that price on. Mm -hmm. So this won't have a big impact to the consumers eventually? I, I think well, we, we're the middleman. The government have instructed us mm. to charge more excise to our consumers of our drinks. Sure. And therefore we will do. And we will try hard to make sure that that doesn't make, take our drinks out of reach. The beauty of our portfolio is we've got beer and spirits brands from 30 shillings all the way up to hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And so we've got our goal is to have price points that everybody can access, whether you're wealthy or whether you're not wealthy. All right. And as we head to wrap up this interview, Andrew, I'd like to just pick your mind on uh, what do you anticipate in terms of uh, the growth projections now that uh, we've seen a stalling performance in the first half. Uh, what, what are your views on the next half? Well, I mean, we've got, a, we've got a very clear growth strategy, and F20 exceeded that very clear growth strategy. So um, please don't expect sort of 12 double-digit percent growth uh, year in, year out. We, we don't think that's the rate of growth of this marketplace. We do think that there's good growth to be had. All of the uh, demographic factors and environmental factors would suggest that there is that growth available to us. Um, and <coughs> we're alive to the fact that there's general elections coming up. We're susceptible to other environmental issues. And so we have a healthy dose of um, conservatism within our strategy to make sure that we can always um, deliver what we promise we will. All right. And I just want to get your parting shot around uh, there's been the crackdown on counterfeits by the government. And uh, of course, uh, the various players in the market have been losing quite a fortune, if you ask me. From where you sit, how big an issue is this? And uh, as a company, any uh, mediation that could be in the pipeline? Uh, we, we believe that um, around 50% of um, beverage alcohol consumed in this marketplace is illicit. And that's not good because um, it's dangerous. You know, we have very, very high production standards to make sure our, our, you know, our drinks are high quality and safe and healthy. You can't do that with illicit, so it's dangerous to people's health. 
The second thing is it's conning Kenya because um, there's no excise attached to that. So that's mm. doing nothing to help build the economy and support the farmers that I've just talked about, etc. And the third thing is players like ourselves are paying our taxes and playing the role we play, we miss out on sales. And so it's, it's lose, lose, lose. And so we welcome the government enforcing the law uh, as uh, assertively as they have done. All right. Thank you, Andrew, for your time. I wish you all the best in the 